What's up everyone? It's your boy Norn Rad 89 here bringing another rad movie review. Today we're going to be talking about Hellraiser Inferno, the fifth film in the Hellraiser franchise. If you haven't seen it, we're going to be talking some spoilers today, so this is going to be official spoiler warning. If you don't care about that, keep watching. If you do, go watch the film and then come back so we can talk about it. Let's get down to that video. Roll it. Hellraiser Inferno, the fifth film in the Hellraiser franchise, directed by Scott Derrickson and written by him as well. It was also written by Paul Harris Boardman. So we got two new writers and a new director for this film, and it's the fifth film in the franchise. <clears throat> Sometimes when you get around to the fifth or the sixth film in a franchise, that's where stuff kind of dips down and it kind of gets lower and everything. And for this movie, it was when I binged it and I watched it as a child, because when I was a child, I got Hellraiser 1 through Hellseeker. I rented them and I just binged them and watched it because I'd never seen the series in a, like ever before. So when I was way back in the day when I was a child, I rented them. And this was the first one that kind of let me down. Like, it's definitely not a bad film. It just was the first one that of the, of the first five, it was the first one that let me down. Like after I watched it, I just wasn't an ha wasn't as happy or as entertained as I was in the previous four films. So let's get down to talking about this movie and the story. So we start off following Joseph Thorne, a detective who is definitely not a good detective. He's 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 into infidelity, he's into drug use, he's into basically all the bad kind of negative things you can be as a detective and everything. So he's definitely not He's the main character in the film, but I wouldn't necessarily say he's a protagonist like at all in this film and stuff. And he's played by Craig Schaefer, which that was another problem for me is like the main actor, Joseph Thorne, I wasn't as connected with. And Craig Schaefer is not an actor that I deeply enjoy or anything. So I didn't really feel a connection or want to watch his character as much. So that kind of brought it down a little bit for me. And the fact that he's I understand we bring in characters to the Hellraiser franchise that it's like they are flawed or they do messed up things. They're just not perfect people. But this guy is like just not he's not an endearing or an amazing character worth knowing really at all. So that was kind of the main problem with this film is it sticks to a lot of the stuff that we like from the previous films. But just the characters in this one are kind of hard to just get along with or even enjoy it for that matter. We also get him as, like I said, he's a detective and he starts, he gets put on a case about a murderer who's called the engineer. And the engineer is somebody who's murdering people, but he's also taken a child. He's kidnapped a child and everything. So he's put on this horrible case and everything. But at one of the first scenes where he goes to investigate and everything and sees it, he finds the laminate configuration box. And that's where we end up getting like his fascination with the puzzle. He's already a character who has a fascination with the puzzles and likes puzzles, which I feel like that was kind of just like thrown in there to give him a reason to like want to open it and everything. So it was kind of like just like a little, uh, let's throw that in there so we know there's a reason he's going to want to open this box. <laughs> but it just, even, and then he opens the box. We get that, we get the whole like him entering into that dimension and that's where the film like it takes place is he's already in the box he's already been captured by the Cenobites so after this we get a lot of hallucinations and crazy sequences where he's like being seduced by women who are disfigured and like dismembered like have body parts missing or like no skin and stuff and then we get another scene where he's chased by a Cenobite who has like no eyes. Like there's creepy effects and really good practical effects in this movie, which I like. They didn't put a lot of CGI in this film, but it's just uh, the story and the characters are something that I'm not, it doesn't grab me and everything. Like I said, it's not a bad movie. It's definitely not horrible by any means. It's just a movie that out of the Hellraiser franchise the first four, they grabbed me. I was interested. I liked the fuck, the stories, the characters, all those kind of things. So it's like it was. It had something to offer me and entertain me with. And this one, I like the concept of the story. It sounds really good, but like I said, the problem I think is just the way the character was written. The main 
character. Like I said, he's not really a protagonist. He's, he's like not a good person at all. So just his character, the way he was written and as the story goes and we see a lot of great horrific scenes and everything, but by the end of it, when we get to the end and what happens and the Cenobites, they have him and they're like, you know, talking to him and he's chained up and everything. It's just, I don't feel anything for it. I don't know if that's what they were going for, but it just doesn't have like an epic punch. It doesn't feel like anything to me. So that's why I like this one was kind of the first letdown of the series for me when I was younger and I was binging all of them and everything. I loved the first four. I was totally enjoyed them and I was like, yeah, let's keep going, let's keep going. But I know when you have franchises that are this big that cover many decades and everything and different you know, styles of filming come out, different writers and directors, so you're definitely gonna get different stuff and sometimes they dip in quality and everything and this was one of those films like I said it's not a bad film it's just compared to the first four it definitely dipped in quality and like I said the characters aren't as amazing in this film and everything so that's why I definitely enjoy the first four better but overall in my book Hellraiser Inferno gets a five out of ten it was definitely a good mediocre good time and everything like I enjoy them because I love the Hellraiser franchise but I would get this one a 5 out of 10, you know, it's not very, very bad, like god-awful horrible, but it's nothing fantastic or spectacular that's going to offer you more that the other films did in the franchise and everything. So thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I hope you enjoyed the review and everything. Leave your comments down below. I would love to hear from you. I also got some other videos going to be coming in a little bit. Starting, I want to kind of announce this now, but December 31st, I'm going to be dropping my next 31 on 31 concept that was created by Cody Leach. I'm going to be doing the Creature Features 31 on 31, and Cody and Sean and CP and Brian Lomax all have their videos out and everything right now, so you guys can go watch those. Definitely send them some love and everything, but I'm kind of making my way through the 31 films and refreshing my mind on all of them, and then I'll be dropping that on December 31st, so be on the lookout. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys, and you have a wonderful day. Peace out.